Okay, so this is going to be our first set of video notes for geometry this year, and we're actually going to do a little bit of algebra review. We're going to talk about probability. Um, so I want you to set up your core notes like we talked about. Our title is going to be Algebra Review Probability. Don't forget to include the date up here in the upper right hand corner. And then our learning goal for today is to understand how to calculate probabilities using geometry. So we'll talk about probability, but all in the context or in the sense of geometry. So let's get started. Okay, so the first thing that I want to remind you of, let's maybe break this down into some smaller pieces here. Um, the first thing I want to remind you of is that probability values can only range between 0 and 1. A probability of 0 means that an event can never happen. I'm not sure why that got turned, but I'll fix it. So a probability of 0 means an event can never happen. So let's think of something that has a probability of 0. Um, the probability that Calvin has blue skin is zero. Like it's just, it's, it's not the color of his skin. Um, a probability of one is what we call a certain event, an event that will always happen. So let's say I was going to flip a coin. The probability that that coin would land on either heads or tails is one. It's got to be one of those things that it's going to land on. Pretty much doesn't land on its side. Okay. Um, all right, so let's do some examples. If we were to select a student from our class, the probability of selecting a boy would be zero. There's no boys in our class. So one way that we can write that using notation is that P parentheses boy. The way we would say that is the probability of selecting a boy is equal to zero. Okay, now if we look at the students in this class, the probability of selecting a girl is one because if I were to randomly select any girl at all, we know, or any student at all, we know that that student is going to be a girl. So again, we would say the probability, I'm abbreviating here, of choosing a girl is one. It's certain, it has to happen. All right, so let's do uh, the rest of what we're talking about on this page here. Let's get rid of this. Um, and let's say we go back to that example of flipping a coin. If we assume that our coin can land on heads or tails, then the probability of flipping heads is 0 0.5. Another way of saying that, of course, is that the probability of heads is 1 half. So probability of heads equals one half. And again, that's a value between 0 and 1. Okay, to calculate the probability of any event, we take the number of favorable outcomes, the, the way the event happens, the way we want it to happen, divided by the total number of possible outcomes. So let's look at an example. Let's say we had a multiple choice test. What is the probability of answering correctly a four option multiple choice test if you pick your answer totally at random? Let's say you choose D. Well, in order to calculate this, we need to know how many total outcomes there are. So we would say maybe the probability of being correct would be equal to what are the total number of outcomes possible? One, two, three, four. And how many of those answer choices are correct? Well, only one of those answer choices is correct. So the probability that we chose the correct answer would be one out of four, or one-fourth. Or, of course, we could change that into a decimal and write it as 0 0.25 or 0.25. All right, great. So let's do another one. Here is a more geometry-related probability problem. Find the probability that a point picked at random from this graph is in the first quadrant. So let's do a little review of our quadrants. The first quadrant 
is the positive positive quadrant. So it's up here. So that's quadrant one. And then we go in a counterclockwise fashion to name the rest of them. So quadrant two is over here. Quadrant three is down here. And then quadrant four is over in the bottom right. So there's our quadrants. Great. So if we want to find the probability that a point picked at random is in the first quadrant, the first thing we want to do is list the, po the possible outcomes. And obviously those are all the letters A, or all the points A, B, C, D, etc. But let's count how many points there are. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. There's 10 of them, right? There's 10 total possible outcomes. Now let's list the favorable outcomes. In other words, which outcomes are in the first quadrant. The only ones that are actually in the first quadrant are points C and D. So let's list those. C and D. So let's say the probability that our point is in the first quadrant, I'll just write a 1 for short here, would be the number of favorable outcomes, 2, divided by the total number of outcomes, which is 10. Now, a lot of times in probability, we want to simplify our answer. So 2 tenths reduces to 1 fifth. And I also might want to represent that as a decimal. A decimal is really nice because it gives you a better sense of where between 0 and 1 a number is and just how likely that event is to happen. So 1 fifth is the equivalent of 0 0.2. If I change that to a percentage, I would say, there's a 20% chance I was to choose a point in the first quadrant. All right, so that is our review of probability. What I want you to do now is go ahead and finish your Cornell notes. You're going to add questions to the left, and you're going to include your summary as well. And your summary should be between two and four sentences long, and it should include the most important information from the lesson.